check out the latest footwear innovation from Adidas, the Adi Zero Adios Pro 2, which features carbon fiber energy rods that are both lightweight and precisely tuned for a more anatomical transition. Everything from the ultra light polyester upper to the re-sculpted midsole and the reinvented outsoles are designed for speed. Visit adidas.com to learn more today. At T-Mobile for Business, unconventional thinking means we see things differently so you can focus on what matters most. That's why we've become the leader in 5G, number one in customer satisfaction, and a partner who includes 5G in every plan. So you get it all. Unconventional thinking is better for business. Open Signal awards T-Mobile as America's fastest 5G network USA. 5G user experience report July 2021. Capable device required. Coverage not available in some areas. Some users may require certain plan or features. See T-Mobile.com. For J.D. Power 2020 award information, visit jdpower.com slash awards. We might be headed to the promised land of speaking the truth and finding our external liberty once we internally liberate ourselves. But their children were saved and their children's children. Generations were saved by one decision, one person. But changing the world can happen anywhere and anyone can do it. So what starts here can indeed change the world. But the question is, what will the world look like after you change it? Welcome to Public Access America. Make a stand. I know I did. Thank you very much, and may God bless America. May God bless America. Right. Hi, Devi. Hello. Long time Hi. no see. <laughs> Thank you for being here, by the way. Oh yeah, thanks for having me. I didn't. I didn't necessarily want to do a whole hour on this, but I have <laughs> enough information that I could. Yeah. So, um, as you know, for brave amateur athletes testified about. Uh, Larry Nasser's actions and mm -hmm. um you know it's been six years in the waiting it's been a cover-up for 16 months and they finally got their say yeah. and I just I asked you to watch it because mm -hmm. well you're a parent mm -hmm. you're a parent you yeah. know and you have this great human perspective where nobody else I know does so I really wanted to talk to you because mm -hmm. I didn't want it to be a political conversation <laughs> so I asked you to watch I asked you to kind of watch like their testimony and mm -hmm. I just wanted to get your overall take on it oh um well uh the first thing you know like I knew a little bit about what was going on um I'd heard about yeah. it um didn't realize how much of a like conspiracy it was essentially um right the cover up the the changing of information the lack of action it it is reminiscent of the whole epstein situation mm -hmm. um where the fbi knew what he was doing and didn't do anything about it Right. Um, so to say that I was unsurprised, I think is unnecessary. <laughs> right. I'm surprised about the pervasiveness of this out in the open. Mm. When you think about Cosby and Weinstein and Epstein and Nasser, mm -hmm. these people are doing it right there out in the open. Yeah. The, and it's not, it's not political and it's, it's gross, but it's being covered up. And it, I think it's because honestly, people don't want to talk about this. No, they, they, they hated it. They're uncomfortable with it, but if we ignore it, it gives these people mm -hmm. the space to do it. And so, um, people told me this was a dark topic to cover. This was a heavy topic mm -hmm. that I shouldn't address um, why is... pedophilia, child sexual abuse. Ugh. And why I don't, don't want to, I don't, why don't we want to like cover it. that? Why don't we want to cover that? It makes you uncomfortable. Right. Imagine how, so that's why how I, the that's survivors why I feel. Some. Um, that's look, I, when I saw them testify, mm -hmm. I, and I had tears in my eyes, mm -hmm. I thought to myself as difficult as that was for them, it would be so much easier for me to devote one hour to it. Yeah. You know, absolutely. People should know about this and they should see the, they should know the warning signs mm -hmm. and they should know that there's help on both sides. Right. Like the way I feel about it is if we want to eliminate it as early as possible, we work with the pedophile himself, whether he's active or inactive, he needs mm -hmm. to seek help. Right. And so I have a note there for that, mm -hmm. but for children, I think to myself, 
your parents love you and they trump anything that any pedophile can say to you. Mm -hmm. You can talk to your parents about anything. But then I thought to myself, you can't. what about those kids that can't? But you can't. And that's the thing is like, it's, it's the reason that people get away with it for so long is because it's embarrassing and scary and shameful and kind of, mm. I, I, it's just horrible. Like I <laughs> said, there's nothing that you can really but say. The thing like, is, is it's horrible and shameful and embarrassing for the, for the, a perpetrator not for the victim yeah and we but, have to get we have to let the victims get past that embarrassment mm, you know well the and, uh, the reason that it's so embarrassing and feels shameful for somebody who's been abused is mm -hmm. because we have this antiquated idea of what like sexuality looks like and what like a woman's value is in our society and a lot of that value is based off of this ridiculous idea of virginity and purity and mm -hmm. wholesomeness and yeah. and once you've been abused you lose that and you you internalize that like you you feel mm -hmm. as if you are no longer allowed access to the joy and the comforts of being you know a happy adult because like who yeah. would want you because we've made this whole virginity thing, uh, which is a social construct. <laughs> like it's ridiculous. So, like the value of having, right. having had sexual interactions with somebody, like being the only value of women. Um, right. Once, once mm -hmm. that's happened, you're, you're second yeah. tier. Well, and, and on yeah. top of that, like, you know, like these, these girls, these now women are idolized. They're, like people obsess over them and their the um, amazing abilities and all of that stuff you know like i even one of the i don't remember which which senator said um said it but a lot of them were like starstruck and like talking about how courageous these girls are and how wonderful it is and how brave and how you know, thank yeah. you so much for stepping forward and doing this. And they're like, we have already right. done that. We're asking for accountability. I was right. finding myself just filled with rage after when like senator after senator after senator was like, oh, yeah. thank you so much for your courage and coming uh -huh. forward. They're like, uh, and I'm sitting there like yelling at my phone going, they already did that. They already yep. did that. This is not what this yep. is about. Like, stop, stop. You're, you're infantilizing these people. This is not what yes. their point is. And they kept right. asking them the same questions. What do you want? What, what does accountability look like? Mm -hmm. Accountability. It looks like put these people in jail for not having done their jobs, for allowing multiple hundreds of people to continue to be molested. Like I was angry. Right. And I feel, I feel like uh, Cory Booker was one of the only ones that he was like, okay, I'm going to address. Yes. Thank you for your courage. But right. like we are allowing you to continue to be abused. We are creating this system. We are participating mm -hmm. in this system. And how do we not participate in that anymore? And I think that him asking that question and him putting that forward was, one of the more poignant moments um, uh, during those, you know, obviously. Um, and then uh, Miss Reisman, I, I'm terrible with names, mm -hmm. um, no, responded. The gymnast. Yeah. So she responded and talked about how the abuse affects you and how PTSD from it affects you. Physically. Yeah. yeah. Physically. And like that was when I lost it. That's when I was like, oh my gosh, yeah, that's yeah. so relatable. Like as somebody yeah. who's been through that and right. didn't feel like you had any ground to stand on to like say anything because, oh, this person is, you know, like uh, they're on the basketball team at the college or, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they have a, a position of power over you and who the hell would believe you. And you internalize all this pain and suffering and you know like that you know yeah. Cory Booker talks about how it was a systemic problem and it's it's a power problem it's the, it, it's a power it's, problem. the bottom line is it comes down to a system of power um yeah and Miss Reisman immediately addressed how that power affects the powerless and the yeah. direct response to your systemic issue of not addressing these things and un undervaluing women in general on a 
daily basis has created the effects you're tired you're yeah. you're physically not capable of like focus and all of this stuff mm-hmm. and like these are highly focused women they, they have to do these things to you know continue right. with their basically their career um you know it starts out as a fun thing and then it, it you know they get pushed into her injuring themselves and then you know of course simone biles yeah. finally stepped forward and said i enough is enough i can't do it right now like I am right. not mentally or physically in the place to be able to perform. And like but to find out that that's because of the PTSD mm-hmm. she had been going through because of this guy, of course, and being in the same places and without her support system, yeah. without her mm-hmm. family there, yes. just to shove her in. Like she was a product. It's so well, they are, so they're noisy. no longer people. Once you get to that level, um, you know, like right. they, they talk about amateur sports, but that's, it's professional. They're professionals, sports players. Yeah. And, we, we dehumanize. And, them. Absolutely. And these, it, because they're women, you know, they're, they're and, yes. made to do the pretty thing and do the cool thing and look really strong and go America. Right. Um, and it's just ridiculous uh, because we're, yeah. we're using them up in every way. Right. We're, we're devaluing mm-hmm. them until they learn to do it on their own. Yeah. Well, That's why we're it, training. It, women. You're training them like dogs. Yeah. I was watching um, on a side note, something somebody was ta- um hysteria was talking about princess culture mm. and how if you're not a prin- if you're not the white princess yeah. the untouch you're untouchable if you're the white princess mm-hmm. but as soon as disney began to make um ethnically diverse princesses yeah. the princess no longer deserved love mm. and i thought that was just so fascinating mm-hmm. to me like and this is the subculture that women are learning from yeah right that you have to be the princess mm-hmm. and once you have a once a man does something to you inappropriate like that whether it's consensual or not mm-hmm. you're a waste yeah and that's that's not it yeah do you think these girls did anything to dis- destigmatize that oh absolutely and uh, you, yeah. look how strong they are <laughs> i mean these are these oh, are people so already strong. that were we admire for their strength and yeah. then to stand in front of people of power and say no that's not enough right that's not enough i am still value i am still enough i am enough i don't they are <laughs> that, that um i think is so powerful you know like you you don't get to devalue me right this does not devalue me and i will not give in I don't care what your system of power is. I don't care that this person has gone to prison. What about the people who allowed him to continue doing this? And that, that, that I think gross. is the best part is that they're saying, no, that's not enough. Right. That well, we want justice. it to stop. Exactly. And we want it to stop immediately in the mm-hmm. future. Yes. It, you know, that, that was the best thing to me was yeah. that they said they wanted an independent panel to look into these things that wasn't paid by the people they were looking into Mm -hmm. you know and that made sense to me we want accountability immediately this guy affected a hundred little girls past the point of being reported Mm -hmm. for 16 months he was free that's after they knew after multiple people had already come forward multiple people that man should have been immediately arrested immediately immediately arrested and questioned like and and they could have prevented it and because it was just a bunch of silly little girls right and would it would it have been so expensive to put an assistant with him after the allegation right you know what i mean like a a supervisory role in some way to monitor him well that's that's part of the problem is that in all cases in my life when i've had a male doctor do any sort of physical there has to Mm -hmm. be somebody else in the room and it has to be a woman and the fact that he didn't have that that's is gross well it's it's criminal like it's that's another aspect that is like this man shouldn't have been practicing medicine at all at the base level yeah but we trust doctors Right. right he couldn't possibly be doing anything wrong um, right. And, and in the chaos of understaffing, of course, mm-hmm. you know, it just happened. It isn't our fault. Right. We'll address it. No, you're not. Mm-mm. You're not looking to address it. You're looking to hire the FBI agent that was investigating it. Right. Right. Like that's the cover up. 
Well, that's right. a cover up. Well, and that sucks. yeah, they're 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 looking to hire that person who lost his job, and uh-huh. like it's all convoluted. Now I want to know, uh, and I think the, you know after watching that, and I have the same question that they did. Like, why? why? What was the reason that this got pushed under the rug? That. It, the, I want to know why there was a conspiracy. Just like with Epstein, why was there a conspiracy? Why did they hide that? Money? Right. Fame? Fortune? Somebody get paid off? Somebody get offered something? Like there should yeah. there shouldn't be the ability to have things be covered up like that. Uh-uh. And, and from no. the FBI, the people that like we look up to is like, oh, these are the people that protect us. Um, right. And the FBI director, you know, later addressed um, the same. I don't give him credit. I don't give him credit for apologizing. No, I don't. Absolutely not. No. Sorry, doesn't go anywhere. Like you, right. he wasn't the director at the time. Like nobody wants your apology. Yeah. They want action. And yeah, he's doing you know the right things. But like, what's going to happen to the person that like just retired, got to yeah. retire? Well, we yeah. can't do much after they retired. No, you can. They should be going to mm-hmm. prison. Like for yep. a conspiracy to uh, cover up crime, like period. Yeah, it started. The investigation started in 2015. Mm-hmm. Larry Nasser started in 1996. Yeah. The investigation started in 2015, mm-hmm. which was Obama, but then it bled into Trump. Right. And and now we're getting accountability under Biden. Like, I, I, I wait. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm we're hesitant. getting we're getting in open testimony a request right. for. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm hesitant to blame it on a presidency. No, I'm hesitant. No, right. I'm hesitant to look at it in a in a bipartisan way. I'm good, you know, like I, because like you can't look at it and be like, well, it was under Obama, so it's Obama's fault. It's like no, no. I'm just it, trying to say yeah. it was under both. It was absolutely under both, so well. And nobody's a winner there. No, right. and like it, it, since 1996, that was also like what. <laughs> Clinton, Clinton Bush. Bush. So it was um, happening Obama, under multiple yeah, yeah. people. And I don't think that yeah. they're the ones that are necessarily responsible. And, you know, right. like, and, th- and that's the thing is like, if you were like, well, the president should have done something. I mean, no, no, the, the value of women is, is so, Nassar. yeah, the, exactly. And Larry Nassar Straight. and the FBI agents who swept it under the rug and like right. changed their statements and at question and changed her statements, yeah. changed the, the, yeah, the girl's statements and questioned whether or not it was really that bad. Right. Like, Cause they didn't want to put in the work. They didn't want to do the work. He wanted a new job. No, You want to diminish, you, know? <laughs> you want to diminish it because like, that's literally the, the female experiences going to the yeah. doctor and having them be like, Oh, is it really that bad? Are you sure you don't have to go right. potty? Are you on your period? You diminish it yeah. because like women's pain is not valuable. The value, <laughs> the value of the female experience with pain is mm-hmm. the <laughs> the most like grossly underrated thing that I've ever experienced. Like when I went to the hospital, yeah. you know, I've been there. I went to the hospital mm-hmm. to get my appendix removed, and they're like, "Well, are you sure it's not cramps?" I'm like, "Yeah, I am. Yeah. <laughs> Why would I be here for cramps? I'm <laughs> 30 years old. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and, and you're a white privileged woman, <laughs> yeah, to some extent, outwardly appearing, outwardly right? appearing white." So, woman woman appearing privilege. exactly so, so I, I will say yeah the the amount of discredibility in pain when it comes mm-hmm. to women is substantially lowered when it comes to your minority absolutely your race. absolutely and that's disgusting too and but to, for all women to think that mm-hmm. yes even the white privileged outwardly appearing woman mm-hmm. is getting treated is getting diminished too absolutely you know? well and it happens all the time like i can't even imagine mm-hmm. like any more <laughs> intersections of like race and socioeconomic status you know i was a right. i was poor and you know i i'm queer and i am straightforward and blunt and like i don't right. accept i don't accept no but some people do I can't imagine right. not having the strength to be like, fuck you, do this. 
Yeah. That's what <laughs> kills mean... me. You don't you don't think she thought about it for an hour before she went in there and, and then you dismissed her? Yeah. Like you don't think you don't think any woman went in and had hours of thought there. Yeah. I'm I'm with them at home. They're not going. They don't want to go because they're discrediting it yeah. before they go to the hospital. So if right. they're going to the hospital, believe them. Right. <laughs> well, and that's that's just part of the problem is like <laughs> nobody believes women when they speak. Right. Nobody believes them. Why do you think it took so long for people to come forward? Because they go through this. They go through this process of like, oh, I'm so sorry that happened to you. You're so brave. And oh, can you repeat again what it is that you want? Because I didn't listen the first time. Like, fuck off. Or or the FBI agent that said, are you sure it's as bad as you're saying it is? Exactly. Wow, that put a question in her head that haunted her to this day. Oh, and it will, right? It, 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 six, like, is for, am I am I just being a complainer? Like, am I overreacting? Yeah, am I doing something? Yeah. Am I doing something wrong? What did I do to deserve this? Right. Nothing. You did nothing. And that's that's gaslight culture. Absolutely. And man, it's so weird. Like, we get women to diminish themselves, and then when they do it, we're like, see, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well. We, we, we train women in gaslight women into believing that they are not worth the time it takes to say something. Um, right. And then we're like surprised Pikachu face when they don't say anything. <laughs> right. When you're literally training, you're literally training people to do this, like from, mm-hmm. from birth, from birth, you know, like little, little. Right kids in a a pink dress are told oh you're so beautiful you're so pretty like and what their value is is their beauty and their purity and their sweetness and Uh we tell little little kids in pants and a t-shirt oh you're so strong and fast look at you look at you go you know and look uh, congratulations like watch watch you like do that cool thing whereas like you're giving power to little kids in pants versus little kids in dresses and you're, you're you're diminishing their value already from the very instant yeah. that they're born you're putting them in a box that you thought because you're in a box yeah. and you want people to do the same mm-hmm. thing you did you don't want people to have a better life yeah. than you because you know? because so, people are so convinced that like boys and girls are so different i'm bullshit like uh, i don't want people to tell me i'm pretty all the time what 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 is it no. what is it about me that you you value as a human mm-hmm. being Besides my right. beauty, because as soon as I hit 30 and gain some weight and stop wearing makeup all the time, I'm what no longer useful with? to people. Right. I'm no longer useful, you know, now. Or, I, or you have to redesign your usefulness. Well, and I, you have to work even harder for it. Yeah. You know, I, uh, <laughs> I'm, it's interesting to age in a female body because oh yeah you're when as soon as you're not hot anymore people don't want to go to you for things even though you're That's valuable right. for something right like i know right. <laughs> i work I, i'm a barber right i hear it all mm-hmm. the time oh well i i kept going to that person because i thought they were hot and i'm like yep. what did you like yep. your haircut like <laughs> <laughs> you know that's exactly what it. the hell yeah. like why would you why why would you do that <laughs> my my roommate my roommate's daughter said her co-worker that he knows was going to start working at the strip club mm-hmm. and he was like i gotta go and see her do you want to go and i was like why would i want to go i don't know her well she's hot but i need more than that right you know what i mean yeah well you've dated 24 year olds before you should want to go see her no i've dated 24 year olds of substance for the conversation not for yeah. their and if like i mean if you want to advertise yourself as just being hot that's great like good for you girl get it but right. get your money while you can yeah, i agree with absolutely that. Yeah. but like that's not all you're valued for right don't do it mm-hmm. because you think you have to right because that's the box you do program yourself For the love of God, deprogram yourself to stop thinking that the only thing valuable about a woman is hotness. And then you wonder why you call her, you're like, oh, okay, bitch. Like when she doesn't want to be around you anymore or you, (laughs) 
right. <laughs> like, because we have, we men have this possession complex. We think we own all that we see. Right. And so well, that's when my says, girlfriend, right? No. Right. Or that's, that's mine. Right. Look at that girl across the room. I'm mm-hmm. going to ask her out and she's going to have to deal right. with that because it's my place to do it. Right. It's my right. It it's my right to go and irritate that yeah, woman. It doesn't matter if it makes her uncomfortable. Cat calling. Right. 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 It's not about making a girl feel pretty. Uh-uh. It's about no. you intimidating somebody. And right. the intimidation factor will only go away when men call each other out on it. Like we don't fucking right. do that, bro. Like, don't do that. Right. You know? And right. it's it's like Cory Booker said, it's systemic. And this whole mm-hmm. thing could have been prevented if women were taught from a young age to be strong and yes. to immediately step forward when something felt uncomfortable. Yes. Because like they're like, well, it, it, is it is it really rape? Like if it, yes. if somebody didn't put their penis in me. Yeah, yes. it is. Yeah, it fucking yes. is. Is it really a sexual assault if they just touched my butt? Yeah, it is. Yes. Yes. And you should be immediately able to call somebody out on that. And there should be yeah. immediate action taken. And if you don't have the right to l- immediately leave that situation when you're uncomfortable, mm-hmm. then that's that's an issue. Absolutely. You know, that's that's trapping that's trapping somebody. Yeah. I always as long as as long as we're talking about it, don't hit on women that are at work. They have to be nice yeah, to you. Yeah, they're they're you being nice I mean? to you because they have to. Yeah. I, so if we're if we're you know helping men out, mm-hmm. please don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> don't hit on your barber. Don't hit on your yeah. your grocery store clerk. Don't hit on your bartender. Like right. we <laughs> like I'm not I'm not gonna say that I don't Especially sometimes when flirt with people tips, because right? I actually like them, right? right? Like there's 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 been moments where I've had flirtations with people. Mm-hmm. I've met a lot of people through work, but like, I'm not flirting with you unless I've known you for a very long time. I'm not flirting right. with you. I'm not flirting with you. Nice I'm being polite to you. Well, right. and it, it, not even for tips, right? Yes. Like, well, because a I'm a genuinely polite, nice flirting. person, right? Acts, absolutely. Right. And That's it's weird when I'm just a nice person and you're going to take that and you're going to like sexualize it. What? Sexualizing yes. my nicety? Why? That's the only. That's what do you want me to be a bitch to you? To put it in. <laughs> no, because then you won't get a tip. Exactly. And so you either have get to put be on sexual blast. to me, right? Right. And like, I hate tip culture. I hate tip culture. I wish that it didn't exist. Tips are me there too. to like make up for the fact that you're not getting paid what you're you deserve. You know, and people are really Tips. hesitant to like pay a lot of money for a haircut, but then they'll tip like. 20%, 40%, sometimes 100%. Right. And I'm like, right. depending on how nice you are and how good of a day they're having and That's right. what you did for them. And it's like, and how good your boobs look. Yeah. Right. No, uh, mm-hmm. it's it, interestingly enough, like if working in this industry with a gender studies uh, degree, <laughs> I right. have noticed like the more makeup I wear, like pre COVID, if I wore like lipstick, I was more likely to get uh-huh. tips or product sales. Um, yeah. If I, wore a sports bra versus like a push-up bra everything was different people interacted mm-hmm. with me different the more yeah. masculine i present the more cool people are with me and we just have like regular conversations but mm. like the fact that i had to worry about like do i walk beside this person or behind this person or in front of this person uh, how likely are they to be staring at my ass and the answer right. is always yes they are <laughs> like, it's just how long how yeah, long exactly yeah. and like how fast do i walk away and then turn around mm-hmm. so i can like feel comfortable yeah. you know it's it's i just have to put it out of my mind otherwise i would like freak out every day um yeah. but like um, the older and fatter i get the less people are like staring at me all the time so <laughs> it, it, <laughs> using when, that when to my it, advantage it, <laughs> when a man looks a woman up and down, he's telling her what he values and what order. Mm-hmm. So if she sees you looking at her boobs first, she knows you're you're not serious. Mm-hmm. But if she catches you looking at your at her eyes or her face yeah. or following her expressions and listening to her, mm-hmm. then she knows you're a different kind of person. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And tip tip culture was created after slavery to pay black people without paying mm-hmm. them. 
Well, and like, it's used still. You to decide this day. how much this black person's service is worth. Yeah. And it just expanded into all cultures because white people were like, oh, we can subjugate white people. Yeah, we can we can we can you know? pay them less than men because yeah. it's mostly like female dominated. <laughs> yeah. Female dominated industries tend to be more of a tip culture thing. Um yeah, right. Hair styling, waitressing, bartending. Um uh-huh. and uh, what I absolutely loathe is like <laughs> maybe it's that women don't quote unquote have the drive or there's just so many of them. But like in my industry, there's more famous men hairstylists. So they right. get huge money and they're like, oh, you should charge like a thousand dollars for, you know, a uh-huh. service and all this stuff. And it's like, be realistic, bro. Like you're a celebrity stylist. Like you charge that because you have an overinflated idea of what your value is right especially like per yeah what 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 does the market look like like i can't charge a hundred dollars for a haircut in olympia Mm -hmm. washington right i could maybe do that in seattle but it it would be like an elite clientele i would have to bend over backwards for these people i could never fuck up like there is no room for error when you're doing that and people will put you on blast but it's all and, about value. And you still have to be that. You still have to be that superficial, sexualized mm-hmm. thing that they want. Yeah. Even if you met Britney Spears, mm-hmm. you would still have to schmooze her and do a good job and be sexually appealing for her to want you to come back. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe I suppose there's also yeah. actors and actresses mm-hmm. that feel differently about that. Yeah. You know. Well, I for me and what I've tried to cultivate in my in my own clientele is like removal of power structure or like a reversal of that power structure. So like big tough guy comes in, I'm like, so right. I will mirror you, you know? And (laughs) I'm like, what you want, man? All right, cool. You know, I I don't allow people to make me feel bad. And if they try, they don't get to see me anymore. And I've, I've cultivated a clientele that like, fits the power structure that I have created. Like I have the power to be able to do this thing. I don't have to service you if I don't want to period. Uh, and that's right. And you disrespect me or my time and you'll know about it. You know, um, I'm always very graceful and very kind and all that, you know, because that's what mm. I am as a person. I just, I care about people. And you want to be you, mm-hmm. you don't want to have to be fake and have a right. wall up just because just to, um, just to make it convenient for somebody right. else. But it, yeah. it just goes back to like, I'm aware of the power structures in, in the world. I'm aware of what's mm-hmm. going on. I am confident in my ability to navigate that, but not everybody is. And that's when things right. get dangerous. You know, that's when people yes. get injured. That's when people get abused. And that's just devastating you know it's hard as a disabled person mm-hmm. i totally understand the power structures out there mm-hmm. uh, you can never ride oh, yeah. but you have to go with me everywhere else it's these little things right. that people try and grab but give me your arm you know it's yeah. these little power grabs and what they do is they start with something forceful mm. but then they dial it back until it becomes acceptable mm-hmm. every everyone that wants to control you does the same thing mm-hmm. and so that initial step when they're harsh to you, mm-hmm. be aware. Yeah. And when it happens again, don't let it happen the third time. Right. You know what I mean? Absolutely. You have one, to one time hold can boundaries. Be, right. And the other thing is if somebody's worth training, yeah. train them. Yeah. Don't get mad at them. But if somebody's not worth training, don't get mad at them. Mm-hmm. Just don't train them. Well, like, yeah. like you said, people making you feel uncomfortable is their problem, not yours. Mm-hmm. It's their inability to be a human, not yours. Mm-hmm. I, Nobody should be embarrassed about that. No, you know, absolutely. Well, I think, I think that fear plays a big part, you know, and like, I think the biggest fear when you're in a situation like these girls were, is that you're uh, alone. And, and right. abusers are... Check out the latest footwear innovation from Adidas, the Adi Zero Adios Pro 2, which features carbon fiber energy rods that are both lightweight and precisely tuned for a more anatomical transition. Everything from the ultra-light polyester upper to the re-sculpted midsole and the reinvented outsoles are designed for speed. Visit adidas.com to learn more today. 
a lot of us are looking for ways to start our day feeling more joy and appreciation. And while some of us write gratitude lists or do yoga, others pour themselves a bowl of their favorite cereal, Honey Nut Cheerios. Because not only are Honey Nut Cheerios delicious, they can help lower cholesterol as part of a heart-healthy diet. So maybe the secret to a great mood all day is a little yoga. Then writing your gratitude list over a bowl of Honey Nut Cheerios. Learn more about a heart-healthy lifestyle at Cheerios.com. Really good at making you feel like you're alone. Gaslighting yes. and tiny. It, it starts out small with one little manipulation. Mm-hmm. And then they see whether or not they can handle that. And like, right. then they're like, okay, this person is you slowly like questioning a little bit and then you break them down a little bit and then it just continues to happen over and over. It's like, you know, like, no, trust me, everything is going to be fine. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, it's narcissistic behavior. It's, it's manipulation. It's a combination of things that like people are able to get away with it, including power. And it's yeah. just fuck. That's first on, that's first on the list, by the way. Yeah. And, uh, the website I went to, and mm-hmm. there's going to be a note with all of this information. So I'm not covering it, but there mm-hmm. is a cycle and in the cycle is keeping people quiet, using your power over them. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, well, that's, that's interesting. Yeah, I've got, um, a, the, a gaslighting list here, gaslighting, telling somebody it's normal. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so it is not it's normal. Like, can a, it's can a, a manipulation child ever tactic, consent? right? But can a child ever consent? I mean, to sexual activity. Absolutely not. A a child can't consent to sexual activity. That's just not okay. And even if you convince yourself that they can, it's not right. They can consent to a hug or they can consent to a handshake. Um, But they're not aware of the complexities and they don't have any understanding of how that works. And um, particularly because we don't talk to kids about it very much. I've talked to my kids about their bodies and sex for a very long time. So they were fully Mm -hmm. aware that like anything like that happened. They, you know, had to tell me. Yes. Um, Yes. Please, please tell your parents. Yeah. If you need to tell somebody after that, Mm -hmm. that's a different story, but tell your parents. And if you're a parent, please don't go off the handle. No, like just sit there and listen. Yeah. Don't get no, but don't get mad at the other people. Don't make it a dramatic scene mm-hmm. when you're told. Yeah. Sit down and rationally process that because the emotions are what scare a kid mm-hmm. because they don't they don't have the executive critical experience yeah. to know how to handle every situation like you do. So mm-hmm. give them the space. Make that space. Yeah, you can you be know. angry when they walk out the door, you know, like you can be angry right. as much as you need to, because what they're going to internalize is they're, they're going to see that you got angry when they told you a thing that's bad right? and they won't tell you a, a thing anymore because they think right. that you're angry at them, not at the situation, yes. not at what happened. They don't, they don't have the, uh, the, the critical thinking skills to get to that point. They're like, Oh, you're just angry at right. me. You're angry at me because I must've done something bad and they'll never tell you a thing again. Right. Um, you have the, to... the easiest, the easiest way to, to, to do this is to just, just be in your child's life Yeah. more than, more than in those critical moments, mm-hmm. be there so that you know their routines and how they act. Mm-hmm. So when they act differently, you know, something's different. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, just for the record, like exhibition mm-hmm. is inappropriate. Mm-hmm. Um, fondling intercourse, um, masturbating in front of a child. These are all really just not appropriate things, mm-hmm. right? Obscene phone calls, texts, yeah. or social conversations. Yeah. Those are inappropriate. Sending somebody porn. Um, Right. Producing, owning, or distributing porn. Mm-hmm. That's not appropriate. No. Sex of any kind is not appropriate. Sexual trafficking, mm-hmm. sharing that individual is yeah. not appropriate. And I just want to get a baseline to let people know, no, don't like, because I think it's important to let pedophiles know if you have the thought, like if you find yourself considering doing these things before you do it and ruin a child's mm-hmm. life for the rest of their life, get help and stop. Right. Because there's a lot of people with these Mm -hmm. um, tendencies that are seeking help. They're Mm -hmm. non abusive in our society. Uh, The only issue is that it's a, um, if, if you are, if you tell a therapist that you have designs on thoughts about fantasies of harming another person in any way, they have to report you. 
you go into a database. And when <laughs> that's not helpful in a system that these are, this is exactly the thing that these people need. So you can't sign right. somebody up on a, a database because they're like, I, I have these thoughts about, you know, anything, right? Mm-hmm. And expect them to come forward about something. Are you right. kidding? Like, you know, I recently tried out therapy for the first time and, and she was like, well, well, not for the first time, but for the first time in a long time. And she was like, I just sure. need you to know that like, if you um, say that you have any like thoughts about harming anybody or yourself, I have to report you. Sure. And I was like, so like, if I said I'm feeling suicidal ideation or something, you're going to report me mm-hmm. for that. I can't yes. talk to you about that. Like, I want to get better. I don't want to actually do that, but I want to talk to somebody about it. That's fucked up. <laughs> like it it's, a, it's, it's a system that works against people who are trying to seek help without actually going forward with an action. And yeah. we need to fix that in the United States In Canada. Mm-hmm. They don't have that mandatory reporting. In Germany. They have a whole industry based mm-hmm. on collecting these people before they, yeah. Because before they act, because like, that's the early, that's how we get rid of it is not by telling children to fight it, but by yeah. telling the people that are going to do it yeah. to stop. Well, and, that's, right? that's, and a lot of, it's rape like, a lot of these people, it's rape yeah, culture. but a lot of, a lot of the people doing this molesting our children themselves too, you know, well, they don't which know. is a weird, right. which a weird aspect. Yeah. They're just feeling their sexual oats and they're finding somebody. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's a weird, it's really it's weird complicated and it's really uncomfortable to talk about, but yeah. you know, but as soon as you start up, developing your hormones, you hit puberty, you're yeah. still considered a child, but you're seeking like sexual situations in some cases, yeah. like there's an appropriate outlet for that. And there's an inappropriate outlet for that. And adults are not the appropriate outlet and children right. younger than you are not the appropriate outlet masturbation's Mm-mm. great do that yep um, do that <laughs> avoid do that. avoid it for as long as you can you know like it just yeah. honestly like there, there's more value to you than having sex with somebody and like yeah. you don't have to do that you can do it and like you know you just have to be really careful talk to your parents geez louise talk mm-hmm. talk to your counselor talk to yes. somebody about it like Good Lord. I know some people can't normalize the conversation. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, we live in a world where everybody talks about sex in terms of the birds and the bees because it's so embarrassing. Oh my um, God. Every, every parent is like, I don't want to have yeah. this conversation. You know, we have it constantly right. in movies and TV shows where it's so embarrassing. Oh my God. To talk about this yes. with your parents. And I'm like, right. Why? Because you're afraid that you're, child is gonna have an appropriate sexual outlet because that's what you're avoiding <laughs> yeah, this is the next thing up parent this is what's on your plate next yes. you 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 don't you can't judge it away no if, you're, and if your the, child has these hide tendencies it and they're gonna be afraid right. to talk about it and they're right. gonna get abused for fuck's yes. sake like talk to because your somebody children will, about this stuff somebody will pretend to understand them mm-hmm. Yeah, you hear it all the time. Like them. girls go yes. missing because they met some guy on the internet and they run away together and yeah. they get a like they're like 15 and this dude's like 35 or some shit. And it's just like yeah. talk to your kids. <laughs> That's talk not appropriate. Before, talk to your talk kids to your about kids what gaslighting is and what manipulation yes. is and what 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 yes. kind of person preys on a child or a teenager right. because like I, I there's technically a difference between like teens and you know like, uh, prepubescent right so preteens right, like a pedophile right. somebody who is into prepubescent kids and then there's like a hebophile which is like pubescent kids um okay uh so it's like basically like puberty to 18 and i i think 18 right. is such an arbitrary number because like, i know i do too like, like i think to myself <laughs> that's where we call um 40 year olds <laughs> right because <laughs> every 20 year old woman i talk to says why does every 40 year old hit on me <laughs> uh-huh. it's just gross it's like they're finally you, you finally aged feel- in now i can fuck right. you ew so you were sexualizing been- them before that like, yeah, we've been fantasizing uh, them before that. And now it's like, remember the Mary Kate and Ashley clock? 
come on you saw that Ew. girl as a little baby you know what i mean like god that's gross <laughs> it's it's gross fuck? but men are trained men are trained for sexuality that's they're trained what, for it they're not wired but, for it right like they are right, taught right. that they need to conquer women and the best way to do that is to like get laid yeah. but then yeah. but then they slut shame you if you're a girl and you're having mm -hmm. lots of sex and i'm like well, who yeah. do you think that you're having sex with bro right you want to marry a virgin is the madonna horror complex right you want to marry a virgin but you want to fuck a whore mm -hmm. right Excuse you want but... to it's like the japanese porn where it's mm -hmm. like this girl doesn't like it until all of a sudden she's super into it right you know what i mean yeah that's that's not how it works yeah <laughs> and and if her pussy's tight she's not into you right yep i think she's not um, into it that was like a story i don't know probably from the onion that a republican mm -hmm. a republican in texas brought his wife to the hospital because her pussy was wet <laughs> oh no it's ben shapiro is that what it was ben yeah. shapiro was like that's it, well it was when wap came out right like but yeah. ass pussy yeah. and he's like that's not normal you should see a doctor i'm like oh it's very normal it's, it's very, very normal. normal yeah yeah just not for you <laughs> But I think I've been looking for some root causes mm -hmm. of everything. And judgment is one of those things that it doesn't have anything that's causing it. Mm -hmm. It is a cause that yeah. we need to remove judgment, mm. like the judgment fuse from our lives. Yeah. And we need to replace that with equality mm. and in our life. But we can't do that because we all need to feel superior. Yeah. And when, when we don't feel superior, we find younger and younger people to um seduce well it's so they so they go wow right inexperienced it's people yes. who don't have enough experience to recognize the signs you know i've mm -hmm. i've <laughs> the older i right. get the, the less easy it is for people to gaslight me because i'm like red flag red flag yep. immediate right? and i'm like immediate i'm like nah you don't get to talk to me like that and as soon as you put up a boundary with somebody who's an abuser they will try to make you feel like garbage they're like oh well fuck right. you you're a liar they right. will project all of their bad shit onto you but that's and... the end that's like the end of it i mean yeah. it it's a long process mm -hmm. to an end but once they realize they can't manipulate you they're yeah they're this gone is the, they're venting before yeah. they leave. and they make it right. your fault of course they try to okay and i'm like thank you <laughs> okay bye, bye. <laughs> <laughs> right. The only two things that matter are that uh -huh. you were here being an asshole and that you're gone and I'm happy. Uh -huh. So whatever whatever goes beyond that yeah. is just the drama of your life, not me. Right. A toodaloo, <laughs> motherfucker. Like, <laughs> get right. out of here. <laughs> right. But not everybody is, especially young people, they're, no, they're, they're they want to be validated. They want to be like, they want to feel beautiful. They want to feel desirable. They want to get through they it. They want to just things. get through the and the moment and the fact of the matter is like they don't have the skills to be able to recognize those things so teach your right. kids what tell you. manipulation is teach your kids what gaslighting is teach your kids right. how to recognize the signs of when somebody is trying to abuse them because it's a grooming right. process it is slow and it's tedious and it's but once it starts yes. happening it's so hard to get out of it because your brain can't grasp that this person that like cares about me is abusing right. me because normally this kind of thing happens with people that you trust, you know, and you trust. It's yeah, not a stranger in the street. It's somebody that you know and you trust. 99% mm -hmm. is family member or somebody that the family knows. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's fucked up. It's, you, you know, I'm but glad that it doesn't, it doesn't, yeah, it I'm, doesn't have to be. Well, and, and I'm glad that it's being addressed. Like, and a, I'm glad that. It, I'm not glad. I'm I'm upset that uh, it should shouldn't have gotten to that point. I'm upset that it, right. this all of a sudden because it's a, such a big blow up thing and the FBI and the everybody mm -hmm. fucking screwed everything up on yeah. purpose. That this is how we have to address it. Like those systems should have been in place to protect those girls in a very like clean cut, like escalated type of way. 
immediately. Period. They and should have been there at the very yes. beginning because we already knew right. that this it was a thing, but we don't we don't want to mm-hmm. talk about it. We don't want to talk about right. it because like Which how long people unaware to it. Yeah, that's just it. I mean, somebody that listens to this is going to be aware, oh, but they're going to the cringe, majority right the majority of the public is saying, "I don't want to know the details of this. Mm-hmm. I don't want to know that he put his fingers in Simone Biles' vagina." Right? They don't want to hear that stuff. Yeah. But that stuff is also yeah. what makes it marked in your brain to mm-hmm. do something. This is now suddenly something that's going to be in a thread of my discussions, because if you want to know what the answer is to the world, it's the the children are our future. And if we break them Mm -hmm. before they even hit puberty, what is the chances of our survival? Mm -hmm. So we need to protect them and we need, so we need pedophiles to protect them as well and say, you know what, this is an abnormal thing for, for for what's going on you don't yeah. want to hurt a child i don't like, i don't want to hurt anybody i don't want to be right. this way it's okay to but admit yes. that you're away and you don't want to be that way yes you're wired differently and it's mm-hmm. morally reprehensible and disgusting but as that are other things like as long as you don't fucking do shit You know, like, just don't do it. You're still a good person if you're not doing it. Like, you can get help. Like, You can be the hero of this story, is what I'm Mm -hmm. saying. The pedophile that doesn't commit a crime can be the hero of this story. And it's It's a shame that they're not out there more. Mm -hmm. They don't have a space to be out there to say, look, um, we're not. Yeah. Because people judge them. Right. That just judge. Like alcoholics don't... have like groups yes, that they can go to. You. you can go to Narcotics Anonymous, but we don't have right. that available for this, which we uh, focus very strongly on like making sure that people are okay. But I know so many people who are like, well, fucking kill them all. I'm like, mm, yeah, but mm. like, yeah, not, no, no. Because and those are the same people that say, I believe in equality, right? But do you do you yeah. believe in equality for the racist that doesn't harm another person, even though you find that morally mm-hmm. reprehensible? No, you want them gone. Do you? And everybody, if everybody gets that, there's nobody left, yeah. right? If we all get to dim- diminish and just extinct others yeah. that we want to, nobody's left yeah. because atheists hate Catholics, right. Catholics hate Protestants, black people hate white people, right. Muslims, you know, it's- and it's a, a disorder is a disorder is a disorder yeah. is a disorder. And we should be able right. to get help for all of the things that are disorders and yes. brains are real soft and real mushy and do really strange things. And some of them we don't understand for the most part, right. we don't understand how the human body and the brain works. Like we think we have it figured out, but we really just don't. And right. we, it's a, such an unpopular opinion, but like those people deserve help just like everybody else. If they're like a rampant offender, like just like anybody else, murderer or whatever, like not everybody's wired to murder, but some people are, you know, right. and like you got to you got to understand that like people deserve empathy and compassion and like, you know, I'm sure yeah. I'm going to get like death threats for this, but you know, it's no. it's <laughs> you know, like the fact of the matter is like We wouldn't have people who offend if we had resources. Right. That's what I'm saying. We failed that community. We failed our community when we allow those things to happen because there were no resources there in the first place. If you don't help help the pedophile, you have to help the victim after the fact. Yeah. And would you rather have a bunch of victims and no help to like prevent that? Right. Then you're just covering it up. Exactly. And that's the problem. It's systemic and it's systemic down to that point because our hatred and our vitriol, we would rather get, have people get hurt and get revenge than we would fix the problem at the start. Right. Like in the end, Mm -hmm. this is all Larry Nassar's fault Yeah, because he couldn't seek help. Well, like he didn't see it as abnormal. It's our system's fault. That too. Our, that, like, our, system, our system failed to provide the help that he could have right. thought to be able right. to not do this. But he ultimately made the decision to do it anyway. So yeah, it's his fault, but it's right. also the system's fault. And I'm sorry, Jerry Sandusky. I've been trying mm-hmm. to figure him out for three days now. Like, who was the other guy? Mm. And Jim Jordan and yeah. his college sexual abuse yeah, coaches. I remember like, that. Thank Eef. you. Yeah, it's so 
pervasive and then it just goes away when people cover it up people are like oh people cover it up like oh thank god it's gone away the media (laughs) isn't talk this gymnast thing was a four second five second in between story thing Mm -hmm. before they went to commercial break right you know and i was like wait what yeah (laughs) Mm -hmm. and so it's just a blip because does it really matter because it's women who cares because women, it's, it's right? Just, it's just some girls that got hurt, and they'll be fine. They didn't die. Right. Why are you I so upset? Tons of, I see tons of Rude. them in magazines. <laughs> There's always another one right there. Yeah. There's always another woman to take their place, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, because we haven't fixed the problem. Right. We, I don't. Uh, I think America would. I think they would fix the problem. Yeah. I think we have a hard time hyper focusing the spotlight on something mm. where the attention is meaningful. Right. So, yeah, we can talk about stupid politics mm-hmm. that we can't possibly change, or we could like stare at homelessness until those 550,000 people were in homes. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. So but we, we, don't do we that. like to, it, just like in our medicine, we like to address the symptom and not the cause. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and but we don't want to actually pay attention to it and yeah for the time mm-hmm. it takes to fix it. We just want to say, see, we saw it. Oh mm-hmm. now I'm over there. Yeah, put a band-aid <laughs> on it. It's fine. Right. Walk it off. You know, it's suicide for prevention, Mom. Is you it? Know? Yeah. I don't ever yeah, pay it, attention you, to those things. <laughs> I didn't know either until, <laughs> until today. I, Isn't that until a shame? I see it on the internet? I'm like, oh, huh, cool. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, Hispanic Heritage Month yeah. goes through October 15th. Mm-hmm. You couldn't even give them a month. You got to split it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're really bad. We're really bad at, at fixing things. Right. We're really good at noticing there's a problem. Mm-hmm. You know? So <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. We're like, well, this has been a big problem for a long time. What are you going to do about it? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> right. I it's a it's a Simpsons thing. Yeah. I tried nothing and I'm all out of options. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I think I think the third leg to this, and you're a parent, so I'll just say your parent, a parent needs to know their child above and beyond the time it takes in a crisis, mm-hmm. right? And a child needs to know that it's only uncomfortable until you get the words out. And then it's it's liberating. It can be. I mean, it, in, if, in general, you, yeah. It, the the but only if issue you have is the parent. our system um, diminishes, uh, like these women experience. Yeah, they it, it diminishes and it questions. And you know, lawyers are very good at trying to poke holes in your story, and they will come at you from every right. angle. And it's a very difficult process. And I'm not going to diminish yeah. that. It is a very difficult difficult oh, process, no. and you have to confront your rapist in court and see them in person and relive your trauma and be re-traumatized over Mm -hmm. and over and over again until until it's normal until you're completely broken Mm -hmm. and maybe you'll get justice and that's i think what this is doing is providing a better system to where people don't have to do that anymore Right. They don't have to hear a room full of senators tell them how brave they are when that's not the relevant point here. They fucking know that. They fucking know that. You don't you don't need to relive people telling you and like being like, oh, I'm so proud of you and blah blah blah. Yeah, Yeah, no fucking shit. Could could we address the real problem, which is why we're here, which is we want systemic change going forward. We want to make sure that nobody else experiences what we experience. Right. That's what we're trying to ask you for. Please stop right. asking the same fucking questions. Please stop telling me how wonderful it is that I'm from your wonderful. goddamn state. Yeah. God, I wanted right. to strangle Ted Cruz when he was talking oh, to them. I am <laughs> broken and so Ted Cruz, by the mm. way, is the reason that I went back in the episode and edited out everyone that didn't get an answer from the girls Mm -hmm. ted cruz i was like you're gross Mm -hmm. you're you don't you don't deserve to be in this episode so i got him out and like uh stefanik or whoever she Mm -hmm. was because it was the same thing everybody going you're so brave and i was like i cut 25 minutes out of that episode from just politicians watching that made me sick right i was like shut up shut up are you going to ask them a fucking question this is a hearing this is not right. your time to like you know be the platform guy and get good pr shut up right 
This is your time you to subpoena to those say? FBI agents and have them in the room and say what happened. Exactly. Right. Like we want them in front of those girls. Right. That's what they want. Ugh. They don't want you to placate them with smoke up their ass. Right? They want actual tangible solutions. God, I was like, I like watching that. I was just like getting more and more frustrated. You know, I was like, yeah. shut up. If you don't have a question, say, thank you for your yeah. statement. We appreciate right. your bravery. Move on. Don't make it a big, long fucking thing. Like, right. because you're uncomfortable having heard this because this is your fucking fault. Like, this is directly right. your fault because you haven't put any systems in place to protect young children, to protect That's women. Right. The, this system is broken. It's been broken for a long time. I mean, you have fucking yeah. what is Brent Kavanaugh or whatever. You literally went from that bullshit to being like you're so brave shut up shut up right shut up like i am so pissed about that no you you're okay with having a fucking rapist president you're okay with a fucking insurrection shut the fuck up ted cruz like yeah. don't tell these women that they're brave grow a pair and fucking do something he oh. even used his daughter oh well, i was uh. going to cancun for my daughter no you no. weren't you were going to Cancun to get out of a snowstorm that crippled your state. Yeah. You weren't doing it because your daughter asked you to go. No. Like you you yeah. don't not do you not get to tell these women how proud you are for them being brave because you yeah. motherfucker, a piece of shit, garbage human who couldn't even stay in Texas and help your fucking constituents when they were dying in a snowstorm, you couldn't fucking man up and I hate that term. You couldn't fucking Yep. Grow. You got it. You got I'm it. so angry. I can't even words right. Um, well, you, you got to admit that manning up is looks different than womaning up, right? Oh, or whatever yeah. the term would be. <laughs> like manning up is head first, balls deep in something you have no idea about. <laughs> and you just mansplain your way <laughs> out until somebody else fixes it. Uh, right? Whereas a woman will be like, hmm, thought, yeah. action. <laughs> right? Like you, the, the fact that he does not have any goddamn right to do that. You ran away. You're yeah. letting your, right. your, your state is yep. dying from COVID because you're a piece of shit leader. You're not a yep. leader. You're a figurehead and you don't do anything to actually help protect people. You promote vitriol and hatred and division. For do not, yeah. do not address those women who have way more fucking gall than you'll ever have. Oh, Exactly. And I can't wait till these women decide that they're going to run for office. Oh, you know huh? what I mean? These, that's the solution to changing the process is to get women um, that aren't used to the system, like the Nancy Pelosi's and the ancient mm -hmm. aliens that live in our Congress to get more youth in there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Katie Porter. Thank you. Yeah. You know, Corey, Corey Bush. Mm -hmm. um, Corey Bush. They're awesome. AOC, Ilhan Omar. You, yeah. I love you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. These are the people that are they're gonna, gonna make a difference in the overall system. But finally, mm -hmm. like I just thought about this. Yeah. If you're a friend of somebody that's that could be a, being abused and you have a better parent than them, mm. it's not snitching to get advice on these things. Right. Absolutely. You know? I agree. So if you have a parent you can trust. Yeah. Like that's so sad. If there's mm -hmm. an adult you but then once like you said, yeah. then they then they're stuck in a process that yeah. isn't created for a solution for them. So, but you can stop the process if somebody mm -hmm. you think is being abused and you address it. Like you said, yeah. that abuser will go somewhere else. Right. So, yeah. if you're in a situation where you're getting abused and you're afraid to come forward yeah. and you don't want to go through that whole process, like, right, I understand and I don't blame you. I don't blame right. you, but if you're strong enough to stand up to people who are going to question you and question your experiences, please do it. Yes. Do it. You have my support. Yep. You can reach out to me and you'll have my support. Absolutely. Same. You're mm -hmm. always welcome to reach out and connect and have a conversation and I will stand up for you. Mm, I will because too. I am and not I'll afraid. Give you resources. I'll give you resources and let you know clear borders. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because yeah. sometimes people wonder. Yeah. But if you're ever wondering, stop wondering because right. it's a, if it makes you uncomfortable, it's not right for you. Right. It might be right. If you see somebody doing something to somebody else mm -hmm. and you're uncomfortable, you just don't want it done to you. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean they have the same value structure, mm -hmm. but inappropriate is inappropriate. And like we said, 
uh, um, a child can't consent. Right. And I think there might need to be a mid range between teenager and full grown adult. Like yeah. <laughs> there might be an 18 to 26 like version of mm-hmm. uh, adult adolescent mm-hmm. that we should yeah. consider, consider treating better. Yeah. Devi. Yeah. We're, we're breaking our children yeah. and making them adults that then break children. I know we need to do better. Yeah. We all need to be better. Thank you for being here. Yeah, I can't believe we do, these topics that I just don't want to cover <laughs> end up being like so amazing. I didn't want to cover uh, credit. Like, like, how do I fix my credit? I was like, yeah. I have no idea. An hour later, I was like, that was a great episode. Yeah. So thank you for making this uncomfortable mm-hmm. conversation. Yeah. I'm always willing to yeah. talk about the uncomfortable things because somebody has to. Yeah. It's spit them out fast. Mm-hmm. Like the bandaid. Yeah. If it's, if, if you're having a hard time saying it, say it fast, yeah. <laughs> get it out there and then, yeah. and then it's dealing with the cleanup. Like everybody else does. Absolutely. I love you, Debbie. Thank love you. Love you too, man. You're welcome. Tell, tell Jeffrey, thank you for giving me you for a full hour Absolutely. or giving his space. Absolutely. He didn't give me you. You <laughs> gave me you. He gave me the space to allow you in. And I appreciate Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yay. Yay. Okay. All right. We're done. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Bye, everybody. To those who would tear the world down, we will defeat you. This is our moment. This is our time. To those who seek peace and security, we support you. Yes, we can. And to all those who have wondered if America's beacon still burns as bright, tonight we prove once more that the true strength of our nation comes not from the might of our arms or the scale of our wealth, but from the enduring. live streams on YouTube. I wanted to run out of that tunnel for my dad. On Twitter. Twitter. Apple Apple Podcasts. Podcasts. Stitcher Smart Radio. 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 Public. And And Spotify. Spotify. Yes, Yes, we can. Public Access Public America. America. History in the making. Making history in the making. I'm Katie Grossman, the ultra marathon runner sponsored by New Balance. I'm also a creative professional, wife, and mom. Life has gotten crazy, especially after battling a tumor, but running still improves my life, both physically and mentally. Go beyond the run at newbalance.com. Check out the latest footwear innovation from Adidas, the Adi Zero Adios Pro 2, which features carbon fiber energy rods that are both lightweight and precisely tuned for a more anatomical transition. Everything from the ultra-light polyester upper to the re-sculpted midsole and the reinvented outsoles are designed for speed. Visit adidas.com to learn more today.